I want to go back now and um the person I said was wrong. Uh we've been communicating and we're going to try to you know get this fixed. And uh I just said and and uh appreciate uh people that have reached out about it. And um he said I'm not a false teacher, just didn't agree with that. And uh, I said, well, you did include the Bible verse about adding to it, subtracting from the word of God. Um, and those are goats, people that add and subtract. And the Bible, the word is talking about false teachers. If you remove the truth and you can't add to the truth. So. The, the one of the biggest things you have to learn about the word of god is that it's very abstract it's very big picture and um if you just read it literally you know i don't care what translation you use you're going to be very confused john 3:16 for starters Says right there, God so loved the world. Blah. How long have we heard that? Oh, it's the Greek word cosmos. And the first definition of cosmos is not even in the English definition for world today. But that's what God so loved. So there you go. That's just an example. And so I want to get down, get funky. I want to get down with three things that to compare and contrast the church with the two witnesses. I'm not dogmatic about this. This is a theory. And, you know, I asked the person, I said, can you produce anybody that's tell the more truth than what we're doing here at this TS Daily Bible Studies? And when people say we, they're like, do you have a mouse in your pocket? Do you have a partner? No, it would be the Holy Spirit, wouldn't it? We. I can't tell you the truth by myself. I can only tell you the truth if the Holy Spirit's given it to me. And I don't have all the truth in the word of God. That's impossible. You would be God. You would be Jesus to have all of the truth. I do think when we're raised, it'll just be indwelt in us. But we will be more like angels at that point. Uh, it is more of a spiritual body. So anyway. The theory, not dogmatic about it, that the church are the two witnesses. The church is the two witnesses. hi -o! Compare and contrast part one. And there's three parts separated by the purple here. The double purple line. The purple. <laughs> you know, like the old 70s rock band. Imagine why they called it purple. Purple Haze, Deep Purple. There was another very popular purple song. Oh, the movie, The Color Purple. Because it's the color of Mystery Babylon, purple and scarlet. All right, anyway, the church, without a doubt, getting persecuted by the Antichrist. This is in Daniel 7, verse 21. Behold, that same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Verse 25 says he wears out the saints of the most high. But okay, to compare and contrast. Now, that's the church. We know that's the church because they're referred to as the saints. Now we're going to see the Antichrist saying, uh, doing the exact same thing to the two witnesses. Instead of being called saints or the church, they're called the two witnesses. Now, where does this two witnesses theory come from? You got to have a two don't you? Well, Revelation begins with, in verse 6, he hath made us kings and priests. He hath made us kings and priests. Mm. 
first comparison beheld i beheld i beheld i didn't get that i didn't get that i highlighted did i i beheld in the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them come on down same thing is being said basically about the two witnesses and when they shall have finished their testimony the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them war with them prevailed against them war against them overcame them and kill them that's a solid comparison number one number two the church being removed into a cloud by jesus and i looked to behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one sat like unto the son of man having on his head a golden crown and on his hand a sharp sickle and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud Thrust in thy sickle and reap. This is Jesus. This is one. And again, this is very abstract. And the removal of the church is in different places throughout Revelation. And it's written in different ways. This is one way it's written. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice, saying to him on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in the sickle of the earth and the earth was reaped now don't confuse that that what comes right after that is the wrath of god and another angel came out of the altar which had so another angel came out of the temple this is not jesus this is another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven and he also had a sharp sickle uh-oh this is for mystery babylon and all the goats of the earth and another angel came out after him. There's two, two different angels after Jesus here. This one had power over fire. And he said to that first one that just came out after Jesus, and he said, thrust in thy sickle, uh, the sharp sickle for the clusters of the vine of the earth of our grapes are fully ripe. And it's the, and it's the blood up to a bridle and a, God's great wine press, the wrath of God. And it, it went up to the horse's bridles. The blood did. Blood came out. Of the Okay, so don't confuse that. So this is when the, when the sheep, what they call the removal of the church, they call it the rapture of the church, but it's not a pre-trib rapture. It is a post-trib rapture because the tribulation is for the church. So, thrust, it, thrust in nice sickle for, you know, the earth is ripe, the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud, thrust in nice sickle of the earth, and the earth was reaped. So you have, and behold, a white cloud, and upon a white cloud, and he that sat on the cloud, and he that sat on the cloud. So you got cloud, one, two, three, four times there. Now watch the church. I mean, watch the two witnesses in the cloud. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life of God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and a great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up into heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Now, you have to understand that, in my opinion, the whole this whole thing with about the two witnesses is very abstract of the church. But good grief, the whole book of Revelation is very abstract. It's a lot of figurative language. You can't just bust out and read everything literally in order. You'll never understand it. That's why I constantly do Daniel and Revelation, because it's so impossible. It's so deep. It's so good. And now, lastly, the church is represented by candlesticks. Now, we know that the sevens are for cleansing. Second Kings 
and cleansing is all throughout Revelation. God's wrath is sevens because he's going to cleanse the earth before the thousand year millennial reign of Christ with his bride on the earth. That's not the new Jerusalem that comes down like a cloud. That's after judgment. It says, then went he down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, the river Jordan, according to the saying of the son of God, uh, excuse me, according to the saying of the man of God and his flesh came again, like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. If I'm not mistaken, this person had leprosy and they were cleansed. This is just like a healing that Jesus did. Okay. So, and we know that the Old Testament is Jesus concealed and the New Testament is Jesus, of course, revealed. But the burning bush, uh, uh, people say that that was actually Jesus. I'm not dogmatic about it, but I agree, I agree with it. If I had to pick one or the other because God just cannot deal with man. And... um I don't know, though, because God had his tabernacle because he could not deal with man. So maybe that was God in the burning bush and not Jesus. I don't know. A lot of different ways to look at it. But anyway, then he went down. and did, did, OK, so the seven, seven times and for cleansing. Well, I will tell you that the church, of course, is about to be cleansed and we're told that twice daniel eleven thirty five. 35 the great tribulation is for the church and some of understanding that's sheep they understand the truth shall fall and to try them that's what the great trib is to to do it's to try them as gold is tried to refine them and to make them white right because it says comma and to purge you're purging them of their sins their final sins and to make them white what the great trip is for even to the time of the end because it is yet for the time appointed you go to the next chapter daniel 12 10 same thing many shall be purified and made white and tried again with the white and again with the tried but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand but the wise shall understand so the great trib is for the church it is the cleansing of the church and they are represented by seven golden candlesticks below is the church represented by candlesticks the mystery of the seven, those are going to get cleansed. Seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. That's the one we should bold highlight. We won't worry about the seven stars. Seven golden candles, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Candlestick is a church. Candlestick is a church. Church is represented by seven candlesticks, and the number seven, because they're about to go through the cleansing of the great tribulation. Below are the two witnesses being represented by candlesticks. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Five times we have candlesticks mentioned. I have turned to see the voice that spake to me, and I turned and I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, closed a garment, down to the girt, and paps a golden girdle. Mystery of the candlesticks, which thou sawest, the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars, the seven churches, seven candlesticks, which thou sawest, are the seven churches. And the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things, he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven 
golden candlesticks. And then you cut right to the two witnesses. Two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Vanessa said she liked this theory. I appreciate that, Vanessa. We're not necessarily correct, but it's a theory. To me, it's better than, than any other. Because people start naming names, but, you know, they name these two, they name these two. It's Elijah and Moses. It's Elijah and I think Enoch. And then there's the Bible verse about Elijah before that great, great and dreadful, dreadful day of the Lord. And sure enough, there is an angel that does just that very thing. Because see, Elijah would be an angel now, wouldn't he? Because he didn't die. He was taken up, right? Taken up alive. Did Elijah die or did he ascend into heaven? Entering heaven alive, Wikipedia. Where does the Bible say Elijah ascended into heaven? Second Kings, taken into heaven. So there you go. Did Enoch and Elijah ascend to heaven? Elijah was taken not into heaven, but as if into heaven that is he was raised up into the air let's go to got questions <laughs> as bad as they are according to the bible enoch and elijah because if it doesn't deal with the truth they're really good at stuff but when you start dealing with election predestination or hell is not eternal torment they'll they'll leave you high and dry And um, Elijah was perhaps the most powerful of God's prophets in the Old Testament. There are also prophecies of Elijah's return. And where do I think that return is? Um, I can't think of it. It's Revelation 14. I can't think of the verse. But it's the same one where, um, well, it's I already had it up. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach, and unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people. Which easily could fit the Malachi... Because it just says Malachi. It doesn't say Malachi and another. If it said Malachi and another, I mean, excuse me, if it said Elijah and another, uh, you might have something with the two witnesses, but it does not. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming and grateful, dreadful day of the Lord. And... I saw an angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth and to every nation kindred and tongue, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him. And this is the end. This is Babylon has fallen. So it was right before the great or at the time of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So it, it's a perfect fit. I'm not dogmatic about it. I'm not saying this is, ex I know for 100% sure. Well, come on, folks. So, you got candlesticks to candlesticks. But that's two candlesticks. Well, early at the beginning of Revelation, he said we are all kings and priests. Let me just give you another abstract. 
people go, Revelation's already happened because it says John testified and he said, these things must shortly come to pass. Well, that was 2,000 years ago John wrote that. Abstract. Once the deadly wound takes place and the Antichrist is crowned as Jesus was crowned with his death and resurrection. We know the Antichrist rises because he rises from the bottomless pit. Revelation eleven seven. 7. So when he rises, but he has to die first of the deadly wound, Revelation 13, 3, 13, 12, 13, 14. And when he, when he dies, the book is opened. And the earth, all that, the, all that are on the earth are living in the book of Revelation then in real time. And that's why that character, Bill Maher, his show is called Real Time with Bill Maher, and all they focus on is Donald Trump. Yeah, 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 yeah. They got, they got fluff all around the edges. But Donald Trump's name is mentioned in every show. Real Time with Bill Maher. You'll be living in the book of Revelation in real time as soon as Trump goes down. As soon as Trump goes down, these things must shortly come to pass shortly come to pass shortly come to pass that's the very first verse the revelation of jesus christ which god gave unto him to show his servants things which must shortly come to pass it'll happen very quickly everything in this book of revelation the four horses antichrist two billion have to die or one fourth of the earth i'm not dogmatic about it but it only makes sense that when it says death to one fourth of the earth it's talking about population not land mass see when things are in the abstract they're said one time you cannot go to another verse and another verse and another book and another passage and get the same thing and know that it's fact. When something is said once, you're going to have to infer. You're going to have to take some guesses. Nothing ventured, nothing game. It's theoretical. So, now, I'm going to take it to the next deep, deep, very deep step. Now, I want you to try to look at it that the two witnesses would be people. Which, I'm going to show you why I think that's quite a stretch. Antichrist rises on the third day after a deadly wound. I'm going to start going over timelines best I can. Two days after the deadly wound event, Antichrist rises on the third day after a deadly wound event, right? Theoretically, like Jesus did. Jesus rose on the third day, and they did have the dark night, and the dark night rises two days apart. The dark night, July 18th, 2008, July 18th. Dark Knight Rises, rose on the third day, July 20th. Doesn't mean for sure that's going to happen, but you would think that this spiritual rising, because God's the one that's orchestrated all of this. Jesus rose on the third day. Would he have the Antichrist spiritually rise from the pit on the third day? I pet goat shows him rising up out of the uh, abyss. I tell him truth to him about to go over <laughs> all of that stuff. Because today was a big day. The full moon's Friday. But um, I'm going to still look for tomorrow to Saturday. And after that, I'm going to start looking at things a whole different. I'm not going to use any of their predictive programming anymore for this. Because if you get if you throw out um, I pet goat, oh, I'll, I'll get into it the other channel. Anyway, so this isn't biblical stuff, but it's their narrative. 
uh, that follows their narrative follows that of Jesus Christ. The rises of Antichrist is spiritual, not literal, because the Antichrist never really dies. But so this is the crowning of the Antichrist two days after the deadly wound of Revelation. 13, 3, 13, 12, 13, 14. All speaks of a deadly wound, but did live. He didn't die. As Jesus was crowned at his death and resurrection. His crowning was his death and resurrection. And the Antichrist has a crown given to him. That's Revelation 6, 2. Had a bow and a crown was given to him. He did not earn it because he did not die and rise. But Jesus, it says, uh, Hebrews 2, 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. So that death is like the crowning. Or the death is the crowning because it talks about crowned and it says suffering death before that. And it says taste death after that. So it kind of tells me the crowning isn't even really the rising. It's just the death of Jesus, him dying on the cross. Just, just his dying on the cross. Not even his death and resurrection. It's just the fact that he died for our sins is the, is, is the crowning. Not dogmatic about it. That's just my best guess. Do you see how now I'm insecure that I'm going to be picked apart about every single thing I do? It's not very fair, is it? No. But hopefully that's going to all stop. And uh, now he's already hidden from the channel. But he said he recommended the channel to somebody uh, after all of this. And I... Uh, Still want to follow the channel, and he, but he wants to talk in a few. He doesn't want to talk right now. He wants to talk in a few weeks. So I've emailed him all this. I said, before we talk, make sure you read all this. Well, now it'll be in a video for him to watch. So that's good. But we'll try to get things. I don't know if anything could ever be the same anymore because I was just a, a lot of lackadaisical, goofy friendship stuff too. Uh, but, you know, friends in Christ, be able to communicate. Uh, email or talk on the phone. It's all good. So anyway, the crowning of the Antichrist is the white horse, as it states in Revelation 6-2, that a crown was given to him. He doesn't earn it. The white horse crowning event kicks off the other three horses, war, famine, and death. And again, I think that's population, not landmass. So the Antichrist, now I want to get this timeline right with y'all now. The Antichrist rises from the pit in two different Bible verses, Revelation 11, 7 and Revelation 17, 8, which fascinated me when I looked at that. Without this little battle or war that uh, this person and I got into, I never would have realized something that I'm going to take to the other channel. It's pretty fascinating. And, but anyway... So rising from the pit is mentioned twice, Revelation eleven seven and Revelation seventeen eight. The beast isn't the Antichrist beast until the abomination of desolation, even though he's he is when he rises on the third day. So theoretically, two days after the deadly wound, he's the Antichrist beast, but he is biblically and to the world he's the antichrist when he is shown to have risen from the dead and who can make war with the beast and so i'm assuming i'm assuming i'm guessing that he's the one that put it into world war three and that will be recognized that he ended this horrible all of this death and carnage on the earth that had taken place he's going to be seen as the one who saved the earth The beast isn't the Antichrist beast until the abomination of desolation. In one aspect, I should say. Because the Bible doesn't speak to him behind the scenes, other than it just says when he rises from the, the pit in, in Revelation 17 that he goes into perdition. 
So he's being a bad little boy and he's running World War III from behind the scenes, theoretically speaking. So they are killed and and we do have who can make war with the beast. So it does give some credence to that. Stuff I say, I guess what I'm trying to prove to you is everything I tell you in theory, I'm basing off of Bible verses. So they are killed with suspect these two witnesses are killed with suspect at the time just after the abomination of desolation. It says the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit, not when he does, but that the one that did. But it does not say at the very moment of when the beast actually ascends from the bottomless pit. Are y'all following me? Um, all right, let's go to it. Revelation 11. The two witnesses. And then when they have finished their testimony, in my opinion, the church has been teaching the truth. Okay. All of these things, by the way, where it says, if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devour their enemies. That's if any man will hurt them. But if nobody's hurt them, then there's no fire. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Then it says these have power. It doesn't say they do. It doesn't say they shut heaven. It says they have power to shut heaven. That it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Now, right there, it's saying that it does not rain. So it's not raining for 1260 days before the abomination of desolation. If you take this literal and they have power, they have power. It doesn't say they do it over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they want to. To me in the abstract, they have the power of God because let's go to a Bible verse. I was searching for the um, sort of the abstracts of how where Jesus said, I and the I and the and my father are one. Okay. We know God is Jesus, Jesus is God. It's Jesus was just a, a human part. God came in the flesh, so it was just a, a pathway. Because man, as I've told you many times, cannot handle all of God. And there's this Bible verse here, I in them and you in me, that they may be perfect in one, that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. And I, I was still looking there. I, I felt like there was this concept that I was looking for the Bible verse, and that might be it, or it might be, be one I didn't find. Where, and there's one like, if you abide in me, you abide in my love, and I and the Father, or I don't know, but it's like, it's all, we're all like one with God, if that makes sense. We're not gods, and we are not God. But by being his that he knew from before he even created the earth, we are one with him in a very small way, we can at least say. So all of these things are really power, the powers that we know, because there's nothing else in the Bible about this, where in the book of 
about the Antichrist in the end times and the book of Revelation, the Antichrist beast and Daniel's Antichrist. There's 2 Thessalonians 2, there's Matthew 24, there's Daniel, there's Revelation 13, there's Revelation 17, there's Revelation 6, um, Daniel 2, Daniel 7, Daniel 9, uh, Daniel 11, Daniel 12, that all deal with the end times and the Antichrist and the Great Trib and so forth. All three in the Olivet Discourse, but I chose uh, Matthew 24 you know, Matthew chapter 24, but there's three gospels that speak to all of this. So they're all triangulating and bouncing off each other in truth. There's nothing in there about these, you know, about anything about two human beings having these types of supernatural powers over 1260 days. I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but I'm saying I think this is the church and this is God's power that's in them that is never executed. If any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devour their enemies. Well, I know that all goats get devoured by a flame of fire at judgment. And if any man will hurt them and this must in this manner he must be killed. Well, maybe every single person that dies during the great tribulation uh meets that same type of death. I don't know. If any man will hurt them, and then later on, the Antichrist hurts them. And we know that the Antichrist makes war with the saints. We just went over that. He's making war against them, the two witnesses. We know that he overcomes and kills the sheep. He overcomes and kills the two witnesses. So, hmm. Let's keep going because this timeline is, it's something else. It says the beast is sent out of the bottomless pit, not when he does, but that the one that did, but it but it does not say at the very moment when the beast actually ascends from the bottomless pit. It just says the beast that ascended. The beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit. Well, he did that two days after the deadly wound. It says, shall make war against them and kill them. Well, theoretically speaking, when would that war start? The four horses. But the four horses are not the great tribulation except for perhaps a partial of the tail end of the pale horse. And I tell you that because you go from the pale horse to the throne room where the souls are dead of those that have died in the great tribulation. But he comes to stop the four. So in Revelation 6, they don't really address the Great Tribulation. They just go from, they skip over it. Or God skips over it in his book of Revelation. And then he pinpoints it in other parts of Revelation and other parts of Daniel. The abomination of desolation. But the abomination of desolation is not spoken of in, in, um, in Revelation chapter 6. You go from the white horse crowning moment all the way through God's wrath without even a mention of the Great Tribulation. Yes, you even go all the way through to God's wrath. There's never a mention of uh, the Great Tribulation except for the souls of them that were killed during the Great Tribulation. But nothing about uh, Mark of the Beast, False Prophet, Image That Speaks. Uh, waging war on the saints, a horn, or anything like that, or the beast. Beast isn't mentioned in six. Just sheep that were killed in the Great Tribulation for their testimony. That's why I keep going over that book. 
Daniel and Revelation because it's so layered. I tell people it's the same story being told over and over like waves that hit a shore. The same story being told over and over in waves. In a different way, it's the same story being told. So the dead body shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom, where our Lord was crucified. And of course, they're taken up in the cloud, just like the church is. Well, let's keep going with this timeline theory if it's two people. It just says that he will rise from a pit, and my theory is that it's a spiritual rising. He doesn't really die any, or come back from the dead like Jesus did. And it says as much by referring to the Antichrist as the eighth, but he's of the seven. That's 007, the Antichrist, James Bond, 007. His word clearly states there are seven kings only of Mystery Babylon. And that's also said as the seven heads of mystery. There are seven heads and ten horns. The seven heads are the seven particular Antichrist figures throughout antiquity all the way through the end times. So the seven heads, the ten horns, and one of the heads were wounded to death. So it's only seven kings. But of these seven kings, it speaks about an eighth, but the, but then it's it says that the eighth is of the seven because it's basically that whole body double clone switch. So you get back to this timeline of the two witnesses. The Antichrist kills them after he's the beast. We'd suspect at the abomination of desolation. Why? Because for 1260 days before that. They were supposedly doing all these supernatural things all over the earth. While World War III's going on, they're stopping uh, any rain. They are, so that means World War III would be lasting like 1260 days or the four horses. And the Antichrist kills them after he's the beast, we'd suspect at the abomination of desolation. Because they had 1260 days. So before this abomination of desolation, the two witnesses for 1260 days, they have all these supernatural powers and will be performing them. Or just having this power, but not using them. Because that's really signifying the church and the church has the power of God indwelt in them but they're unable to use it for three and a half years prior to the abomination of desolation they're prophesying these two supernatural beings and are they performing these supernatural things or do they just have the power to or as i see it this is symbology in the abstract Jim Brown says much of Revelation is abstract. He's just incorrect. One in, buddy. <laughs> He's just incorrect on much of it. But much of Revelation is figurative speech. This is why I keep going over the end times. Malachi's angel, I've already shown you all that. Malachi saying Elijah before the great dreadful day of the lord's wrath i think that in my opinion what i think it is is that he's this angel and talk about um uh, malachi four five six It used the words great and dreadful day of the Lord. And um, in Revelation 6, I told you there's no mention of the abomination of desolation. But it goes all the way through to God's wrath. The very end time. The very end time is right there at the end of Revelation 6. You get God's wrath, but it's detailed deeper in Revelation um, 
18, I believe. I get them all mixed up. 17, 18, 19. They all kind of run together for me. Oh. He said to the mountains and rocks, follow us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne for the, his wrath has come. The wrath of God is already there in Revelation 6. But then you go to Revelation 13 and you get the abomination of desolation. Which is way before his wrath. So the book of Revelation is not written in order, people. It's the same story being told over and over and it comes in waves. And it's always told in a different way for the most part. I've been doing Daniel Revelations, Daniel Revelation studies for the past 941 straight days. Two years, six months, 29 days back and forth. How crazy is that? That's why I'm able to bounce around and, and stuff like that. Still don't remember. Like I, you know, I'm still like. So it's going over, you know, the great city and, you know, God's wrath there in Revelation 18. Um, when you go to 17. Let me see what is 16 again i mean i could i do this stuff okay wrath of god 16 so basically i think it's 15 and 16 is is just his wrath trumpets bowls angels blowing it's only eight verses in Revelation 15. So anyway, that to make it fit, that two people are on the earth. And they're performing all these supernatural things for three and a half years before the abomination of desolation. The way I see everything happening is he's going to go down in a very fake staged event to his right eye. It will immediately kick off World War III, cyber attacks, internet down. Electricity out, cyber attacks, you know. Here comes the war, the famine, the death. World War III has begun. There's no more grocery stores. One out of four people are going to die due to the war and the famine. It clearly states that. And then the pale horse says death to one-fourth of the earth due to the war and the famine. I think that one-fourth, we're at eight billion right now. It'd be a perfect two billion. We just turned the eight billion just not long ago. When did the population reach eight billion? The 15th of November, 2022. According to Wikipedia, the day of eight billion was targeted by the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs Population Division to be on the 15th of November, 2022. They made sure that we hit the eight so two billion could die, in my opinion. How long does it take to kill two billion people? Well, if he didn't go down until October, and if if the abomination of desolation is at the total solar eclipse in April, November, December, January, February, March. You have five solid months in between with earthquakes, 
potential tsunamis, turning up the technology, making people very sick, starvation, bombs, laser fires, fires started by laser, but especially freezing to death during the dark winter. Or maybe he didn't go down until 2024, right after the election. I don't know. Should be quite obvious. I don't know when, I don't know the day he's going down. It's a fun little hobby, but I care less and less about it. I'm enjoying writing a book about the non-guesses, the things I'm sure about election, predestination, and so forth. Love y'all very much.